Okay, what is the system of checks and balances? Well, that is the principle that each branch of the uh, government should check or provide a balance against the power or authority of another branch of government. Now, uh, the intricate system of the way that laws are passed, executed, and reviewed um, ultimately provide for this checks and balance system. So if we start with the legislative branch, now their core principle is to make law, but their law is what guides the executive in the carrying out of those laws. Um, and it, the passage of a new law will trump a judicial interpretation or treatment of the old law, so it supersedes the new law. The, the, the new law supersedes the old law and any common law uh, uh, surrounding that old law. Okay, uh, so um, Congress also has the authority to uh, approve the president's or the executive branch's budget uh, each year for how they carry out their opportunities. Now, this is a strong check on the use of funds and the collection of, of taxes or, or revenue from the populace to carry out. So, again, um, there's a representative uh, government that's checking uh, that power or authority. Um, the uh, president um, appoints uh, executive mem high level executive members and uh, members to the ju uh, Article Three Judiciary. Well, uh, Congress approves or must approve these appointments to the to the federal judiciary or to high level administrative uh, positions. So again, this is a an authority that Congress uh, has or or. Uh, that can check the power or authority of, of the president. And ultimately, if the president commits misconduct or wrongdoing, uh, it's Congress that maintains the right to uh, bring formal charges against the president through uh, impeachment. Okay, so that's the checks uh, supplied by the legislative branch. Now, the executive branch also has checks against Congress and the judiciary. That is, um, the executive can veto any legislation coming from Congress, and it takes a supermajority uh, vote from the um, from the from Congress to overcome that veto. Okay, um, now. Uh, the president can selectively carry out laws or prioritize the carrying out of Congress's laws. Now, um, again, that has the ability to check um, the influence or authority of the laws passed by Congress. Um, the president has the ability to, uh, or the authority to point judges to the federal judiciary. Now, while these judges have to be approved by Congress, it mu the nomination must come from uh, the president. And then the president has uh, criminal pardoning power or the ability to forgive uh, criminal allegations against individuals as um, um, if an individual has had charges uh, raised or brought against them or uh, been convicting of that, the president has the unilateral authority to forgive that conduct. Okay, And then lastly, the judiciary has the ability to review any uh, uh, procedures uh, or actions taken by the judicial, the uh, le the excuse me, the executive branch in carrying out laws. So when the judiciary reviews that, they have the ability to uh, deem any conduct uh, a violation of the Constitution or uh, contrary to the intent of the legislators in passing that law. Uh, they have the ability. Uh, the judiciary has the ability to review any laws passed by Congress for um, constitutionality. That is, uh, the law itself is it constitutional, and uh, if the law in how it's being applied violates constitutional rights, then the court can limit that application of the law to make sure it fits within constitutional boundaries. So in this way, each branch has some check or balance over the other branch. And again, this is just a general synopsis of what is our checks and balance system.